Here we talk about how to estimate the central tendency for Gupta theta. Sometimes we are given a frequency distribution without raw data resource. The frequency distribution is also called Gupta theta. We may want to know the center values and the quartiles for the Gupta theta so we can have a better understanding of the central tendency and dispersion. We should have noticed that the statistical functions in Excel can only be applied to raw data. If we do not have raw values of the data collection, we cannot apply statistical functions to frequency distribution. We can calculate the mean and the standard deviation in a regular way by using the midpoint value of each class as the value of every datum in that class. The midpoint is our best guess of the data value in each class since we do not know the raw data values. For meeting, we can recognize the location by using the total number of the observations. Then we will know which class in the frequency distribution table contains the median. The class with median is called median class. The estimation of median are all based on the information of the median class. The following formula is normally used to estimate the value of the median. In this formula, all the notations or letters are related to median class. L is the lower limit of the median class. N is the size of the population or sample. F is the frequency of the median class. Fc is the cumulative frequency up to but excluding the median class. W is the class width of the median class. So here, Let's take a look at an example to show you how the estimation is done. In this question, we are only given the frequency distribution about the net income. We are going to get mean, median, and the standard deviation based on only this frequency distribution table. We expand this table with more information. Midpoint, frequency multiply midpoint, and frequency multiply midpoint square. For each class, we can find the midpoint, which is exactly the value located in the middle of that class. We can always get a midpoint from calculation, which is lower limit plus upper limit and then divide by 2. For example, the first class, 2 plus 6 equals to 8, 8 divided by 2, 4. 4 is the midpoint of the first class. Next column, we use frequency 1, multiply midpoint 4, we get 4. And the next column, we use frequency multiply midpoint square. The reason with this column, because we are going to use information in this column in the formula for calculating standard deviation. After we have the extended table done, we have three key total values at the bottom. Total frequency, total of frequency multiply midpoint, total of frequency multiply midpoint square. So we can easily get a mean 12.2 by using the two total number 244 divided by 20. Then, we try to recognize the median class. 
total frequency 20 means we have 20 data. So the middle location would be 10.5. Then we check which class has this 10.5 position. First class have one data, second class has four data, together five. We're not reaching 10.5 yet. And the first three classes together, we have 15 data. Obviously, the 10.5th position is located in third class from 10 to under 14. So in that case, we recognize third class as meeting class. And then we use the information of this class in the formula. We can get median is 12. And then we use the other information into the formula to calculate standard deviation. We only need this three total number plug in and we can get. Or we can use the formula directly, which related to the original definition of standard deviation. We use a midpoint to calculate the variance to mean square and multiply the frequency and do the total divided by n minus 1. The reason here divided by n minus 1 because we treat this data collection as sample which is mentioned in the question. If the collection being considered as population and the formula would be dividing by n. In addition to the formula of estimating the median, we actually can make an instant guess after we recognize the median class. It is the same idea that we have done at the beginning. Since we use the midpoint of each class to represent the values of the data in that class, we can simply use the midpoint of the median class to be the median. Similarly, after we recognize which class has the first quartile, we can take the midpoint of that class as the value of the first quartile. We sure can do the same for the third quartile. This is the reasonable estimation as well. Here let's have a look at the question we had in our first test below. We can click this icon to get the data and then you can click this icon to choose open this uh, data file in Excel so from this uh, data collection we add a few more columns to this frequency distribution table midpoint Frequency multiply midpoint. Frequency multiply the variance for each class. For first class, we can fill in from 0 to 19, which is 9.5. The midpoint, 20 to 39, which is 29.5. And we can do the auto filling until this part and the last class is a little bit special the question give us information to choose the midpoint as 300 and then we can use the frequency multiply the midpoint Simply do the auto filling. We come out to the total of frequency. We come out the total of this frequency multiply midpoint. From here we can come out mean. 
just simply use this total divide by since we have mean here and then we can use this part frequency multiply midpoint minus mean we're going to use this mean for every class so we'd better use absolute cell address to fix this value and then we do square and we can do auto filling get every variance and have the total done and then we can get standard deviation if we consider this as a population we can directly just divide by n and do the square root here's our standard deviation when we need to figure out median or the other two quartiles and we are going to find out the location where the quartiles and median belong to find the class and then we can use that midpoint of the class to represent corresponding quartile or median so in that case if we come out cumulative frequency would be easier for us to recognize which class has the quartile or has the median so first the class you have only two data so the cumulative frequency is two and the second class your cumulative frequency you would put the two classes together if we continue doing that keep adding that is what cumulative means we can get the cumulative frequency we pick up this part information we can show the table with cumulative frequency only so we can clearly see for first the quartile we try to find 25 percent location so which is the location for 25 percentile we use the formula n plus 1 multiply 25 percent or we can simply write it on 90 plus 1 divided by 4 so we turn out the location is at 22.75 when we check the cumulative frequency the third class 26 the second class is 13 so the first two classes 13 data not reached 22.75 yet but the third class the first three classes has 26 data so it's go over 22.75 position so in that case the first quartile belongs to the third class and then we can simply use the midpoint of the third class to represent the first quartile similar idea we come out of 45.5 position belongs to the class 60 to 79 in that case the midpoint of this class being considered as second quartile or it is a median similarly the third quartile can be found in the class 120 to 139 so the midpoint 129.5 being considered as third quartile and to go further we can find interquartile range 
80. And then we can find the lower fence, negative 70.5, and the upper fence, 249.5. Since from the question, we were told for the last class, the midpoint is considered as 300. So in that case, we would consider the nine data in last class as outliers, since the R above the upper fence 249.5. On average, they are above 249.5. So this is still kind of estimation. It doesn't mean exact night data are outliers. Just based on the information we have, we can have this kind of guess. In this question, we actually have a little issue. We can see this kind of classification all the time, but technically speaking, it is not quite right. For quantitative data information, when we try to set up the classes, we don't want to miss any data value, any observations. So we have the classes setting with no gaps. So with this kind of classes set in this table, we may question where the data between 19 and 20 belong to. Have we missed them? So we'd rather to have the classes set as this way, 2 to under 20, 20 to under 30. So you can see in this way, 20 doesn't belong to the first class, but 20 belongs to the second class. With this kind of classes setting, there's no gap between any two classes. So we won't miss any data with this frequency distribution. The upper limit of the previous class must be equal to the lower limit of the next class. That's what we should do. Based on this kind of classification, and then we can do the similar way and we come out the mean and the standard deviation. Just to show you the result here.